Hello and welcome to this week's Comics from the Future for the week of May 5th, 2023. I'm Jason. I'm Andy. And we're with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Comics from the Future is our show where we go over all the comics available for pre-order. So if you place your order with whatever shop you order comics from, by this Sunday night, you're guaranteed to get those comics. Which is a great feeling because mm -hmm. sometimes these things fly off the shelves. Yes. Um, so... It's a very, I don't know, middle to ground, middle middle ground week as yeah. far as big or small. Not a lot of DC, but Marvel picks up the slack. So let's begin with our featured comics. Starting with Ultimate Invasion, one of the bigger books probably of the year for Marvel. This is, we don't know a lot about it, but we believe that this is going to bring back the Ultimate Universe. The universe that yep. brought you... Miles Morales, uh, Master, Ma Evil, yeah, evil, the, uh, the Maker, yeah, Maker. Uh, just so many awesome things. I mean, I feel like a lot of readers now got into stuff with stuff like Ultimate Spider Man, yep. like stuff I would still recommend to people as great, uh, kind of modern jumping on points. But this is going to be written by Jonathan Hickman, and the art is by Brian Hitch, who's also doing this wraparound cover. Uh, we don't know a lot about it, it's a four issue mini series, so I feel like as it's going on, we'll learn what are the ramifications of this. And it says the maker, who uh, is the Reed Richards of the Ultimate Universe, is going to... Uh, it says, is he going to attempt to destroy the universe or remake it? And I think we know he's going to try to remake, Re remake his, it. his universe. Which he's appeared in Venom. He's been in he's been in stuff here yeah. and there. Uh, For I, being from a destroyed universe, uh, he's doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah, and he's really set himself up as like a pretty interesting villain, uh, just in the main six one six universe. So I think this is really exciting. I hope people jump on this early because this is going to be one people are going to go back trying to get the issues of once they announce and announce a new Ultimate Fantastic Four, Ultimate Spider Man, Ultimate Iron Man, all of that. I want to see looking at this cover. Where's Ultimate X Men? Yeah, well, you one of the variant covers. You'll have to oh, check it out. Oh, see, I only research my books. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, just hold your breath. So this is the uh, back of the cover. So you've got Wasp. We've got Ultimate Hawkeye, uh, Hulk. So many uh, of those memorable characters. And Hickman was one of the original artists on the Ultimate Universe. Yeah. So it's cool to see him back doing that. We have a blank cover. See, I can picture Ultimate X Men here. That must yeah, be what that's you what meant. I'm. That's what I'm referring to. Your imagination. <laughs> we have the John Tyler Christopher uh, Miles cover. It does say Miles is like the center point of this. So also, if you're a big Miles fan, I feel like this is really important. Good choice, and just a really cool cover. Is is really cool. Stands out. I feel like this is a cover you could stare at for a while, then stare at a blank wall, and you'd still see it. Still see it and be burned in your eyes. We have the Peach Momoko variant with Wasp. Good to see her back after her untimely death in uh, Ultimatum when she got eaten by Blob. So good, good <laughs> that she's back. We have the, uh, this is the... What is it, Ron Lim, I This think? is the Ron Lim. It's also an homage to the original Ultimates cover. This is the Russell Dodderman. This is what I was referring to. Okay. So you have Ultimate Jean Grey or Marvel Girl and Ultimate Wolverine on there. There we go. Yep. Okay, I'm satisfied. And then this is the Sarah Pacelli variant as well. So it's also interesting to see a lot of characters that died in the Ultimate Universe are back. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited about this. All right. Another Marvel book I think a lot of people will be excited about is Loki is yep. getting another four-issue miniseries. He loves his four-issue miniseries. So he takes me back to Vote Loki, which oh, is yeah. a really awesome series. Okay, so this is by writer Dan Waters with art by German Peralta. And the premise for it is that Loki is going to be a hero in this. He's going to be a hero in that he has to undo things that he previously did. So he had created some terrible weapon. I don't know what, but some terrible weapon years back. And this weapon has now been unearthed and pieces of it has kind of scattered across the Ten Realms. Well, he realizes, I need to clean this mess up before somebody puts this together because this could end the entire universe. <laughs> So, uh, hero, not a hero. I mean, I think his intentions are good now. Yeah. But I'm sure he's going to do it in the most anti-hero ways. So, here is the regular cover. Here is our art germ cover. Yeah, very nice. Yes. Here is the Frank Miller cover. 
very interesting. I kind of creeps me out. Yeah. Here is the Rob Rice cover. They call this the teaser cover. So, you know, interesting. looks like we're going to get all the different forms of Loki, including the alligator one over there on the side. Yep. You see in the background. So and uh, here is the Todd Knock window shades variant. He's probably this is probably the most different window shades variant they've done so far. That's For sure. Really, that's cool. I, I vote we get Frank Miller to do all the like the Todd Knock headshots. I want Frank Miller ones where they're all just kind of creepily staring at you. Oh, man. OK, next up is kind of our one big DC book. The number one of the week is Power Girl Special. This is a one shot. This is spinning out of Action Comics and Lazarus Planet. Power Girl now has some new powers. Uh, she has some kind of psychic abilities that she kind of developed in the end. Uh, the backup stories in Action Comics. And she is going to be going into the uh, dreams of some key DC heroes to, uh, it says, help them battle literal and figurative demons. So it sounds really cool. I think this is definitely setting up future stuff for Power Girl. This is going to be by Leah Williams and Marguerite Savage. This is our A cover by Savage. We have an art germ cover here as well. Very nice. And did you say on other shows, is this the one that's going to be in foil I believe uh, two of these will be in foil. So uh, this one is in foil. We have an Amanda Connor cover, which I think is great. She had such a great run on Power Girl with Jeff Johns. Uh, to, anytime she does, Power Girl is fantastic. This is the uh, David Nakayama cover, and this one is also in regular and foil. And I know they teased a new series with Fire and Ice in, uh, where they're going to Smallville. And I, this might have be a little lead into that. Right. And so this is just a one shot, correct? Yes. OK. You know, that's a lot of why we do the show, because this is something definitely pre order it. Uh -huh. This will let us shops know how much interest is in this. Yeah. So, I mean, if a shop looks and there's only like three people signed up, well, they could quadruple the order with 12. Yeah. And then, you know, what do you know? 40 people come out looking for, for it sure. on opening day. Especially with the variants, yes. too. It's great to let them know what variants. All right, time to get to an indie series. It is Bryn Moore. This is from the team of Steve Niles and Damian Worm, who did October Faction. Of course, Steve Niles, I think I started reading his stuff with 30 Days a Night. Yep. I'm sure everybody knows about that. Anyhow, they're back to their uh, their creepy work. And this has to do with a man who has moved back to a city or a, t a little town where he's from. And no, it's not called Bryn Moor. Oh, that's my, that's my first guess. Right. So this man, he is recently divorced and he is also recently sober. So a lot of inner demons. He moves back to this town where he discovers it has a secret history linking back with his ancestor, who I'm going to guess last name was Bryn Moor. Sounds, that name has to come in there somewhere. But really, I mean, mm -hmm. the thing to know is it's Steve Niles, and Damian Worm doing another creepy series. So here's our main cover by our interior artist, Damian Worm. And here is the Francovia variant. If you're going to do a horror series, Francovia is a great one to get doing a variant. Yep. Okay, next up is Star Wars Mandalorian Season 2, number one. So just like they did with Season 1, uh, this is every issue is going to be one of the episodes. So you can guess it's going to be about an eight issue series uh just covering you know kind of an adaptation of that now what's the cool thing about this is if you know the show you know what characters are going to be appearing in each of these so you can look forward to some first appearances like with this one this is the episode um the marshal which is the first appearance of cobb vanth uh and this is a great episode with the crate dragon and all of that but definitely sign up for this one because uh you know, just because you got season one doesn't necessarily mean your story's going to pull you season two. You need to let them know that you want that. This also has some fantastic variant covers. So we have the, uh, it's kind of the movie still concept art variant. We have this one. This is the uh, EM Gist variant with Cobb Vanth. I think this is going to be a really big one. That's a really nice cover. We have the, uh, this is the Ganachow, uh, Pride Month variant. And we have the Yagawa 
variant, which I also think this one's really fun. How do you think the top of uh, Grogu's head would feel? Squishy. Squishy? Yeah. Squishy rather than bumpy. Yeah, I think I think the skin's still pretty soft. He's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, also, one to include this, is Star Wars Empire number one. Also a one-shot. This is still part of the uh, Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary one-shots like they did. Jabba the Hutt. Uh, they did Ewoks. This is Empire. So this is going to be by Jody Hauser and art by Jethro Morales. And it actually follows a technician who seems like he's kind of, he's not working for the Empire, but he was maybe hired by the Empire to work on uh, something on the Force Moon of Endor as they are setting up their base there. And he has to decide, is it, do you go along with what you know to be wrong with being part of the Empire, or do you stand up against all of that, possibly losing your job or your life uh, in rebellion of that? And that's going to be, I think, a really interesting series. There's also some really good variants for this as well. One, this A cover is, is awesome. So is this a new character as far as you know? As far as I we know, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know of any... He's Star Wars technicians around that time, so. Because, I mean, if this character were to survive this and, you know, go against being a clone, uh -huh. that'd be a good way to build up yeah. sort of an interesting character to do more with. We also have the connecting variant this time, uh, Boba Fett in the middle. We have, this is the Tom Riley variant, too. Very cool with the scout troopers. Okay, uh, another one from Marvel and Rob Liefeld. It is Deadpool Badder Blood. So there was the miniseries previous to this, Bad Blood, where Deadpool kept getting uh, the crap beaten out of him by the character you see there in the upper left. His name is Thumper, who is just a character who just would just beat Deadpool to a pulp knowing he'd come back and he could <laughs> do it again. Well, Thumper is back. However, I should also mention this has another first appearance in it. It's the first appearance of a character called Shatter Storm. Yes, you heard me right. To, like, Not Shatter Star. No, Liefeld, he's way past that. Shatter Storm. But I guarantee people are going to come out of the woodworks when this hits day one for this character. Not like it's going to you know, go up to like a $50 book or yeah. something, but... This stuff's always under order. Anyhow, this is going to be a five-issue miniseries, and uh, it's also going to star Wolverine and Cable. They're in some sort of rescue mission. It doesn't say what. I don't know if they're rescuing Deadpool. It sounds like they may be rescuing somebody else. Hmm. Anyhow, um, Lifefield is co-writing it, and he's doing all the art. He did this cover. And then we have this Panosian variant. We have another Liefeld variant. And then we have... The Scotty Young variant. That's fun. I like the doing it the the landscape. Yep. Okay, a new one from Opus Comics. This time it's Frank Frazetta's Mothman. Uh, so if you don't know about Mothman, he is a I want to say a real cryptozoological creature, but it's a you know not created by Frank Frazetta. It's a it's a real it's, myth. It's an urban legend. It's an urban legend. Uh, out of West Virginia. Uh, and this takes place in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, where there has been some witnesses to see this large winged monster with glowing eyes. Uh, and when those original reports took place back in the 60s, Frank Frazetta heard about it and did his own painting of it. That You'll see that on the variant cover. But they took that painting and just like with Death Dealer, uh, expound upon it. And this is uh, really interesting. So... I won't give away too much because I've read the free comic book day book. You will get your first taste of this in the Frazetta verse free comic book day book coming out Saturday, free comic book day. Uh, but it's definitely a interesting spin on the character where maybe Mothman is not the monster at all. Maybe it's the people of Point Pleasant that might be the monster. So mm -hmm. you'll have to check it out. It's it's really interesting. Uh, and don't miss that free comic book day book, the Frazettaverse, that will have a preview of this in it. We also have the, what it's based on, the Frazetta cover that's based off his painting uh, that I think is just fascinating to look at. Yeah, that's great. Frazetta also, he liked to have characters who were sort of towering or trying yeah. to get away from whatever his centerpiece is. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to get to some other number ones. Not all of them can be featured, but they all matter. Starting with 
Son of Origins. This is a 96 page comic that reprints all these characters' first appearances. So it reprints Journey into Mystery 83, Tales of Suspense 39, Strange Tales 110 and 111, even though 110 is really the first appearance of Doctor Strange. It, it, cont- it, it finishes the tale. And Daredevil number one. So 96 pages, all reprinted. Uh, we're talking stuff by Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, and Bill Everett. All in one issue. I feel like this is part of why we do this show because you see a book like this with all these characters you see son of origins it doesn't necessarily no. tell you what that is also i'm not sure on the title son of origins what that even means but now you know i think it's you know still super cool it's just not like the launch of a new series and with comics like it's not like you can flip to the back and see <laughs> you know some stores you can't even open it yeah. based on their rules you know so Okay, it does have some variants. Here is the Peach Momoko variant. It's really cool. And here is the Zulo <laughs> dog variant. She did cats. Now she's doing dogs. You know, I, I think, you know, when Stan Lee and Kirby and Ditko and Everett did their stuff, could they have imagined these variants were going to be on there, the Momoko and the Zulo of uh, their yeah. creations? I doubt it. Okay, next up is a uh, new issue. I couldn't tell. I believe this is, I can't tell if this is a one-shot or a mini-series. It's very vague because it is part of the um, X-Men Fall of X kind of initiative. But this is X-Men Before the Fall, Mutants First Strike. So I believe it's a one-shot from kind of what what it sounds like. This is going to be written by Steve Orlando, and the art is by Valentina Pinti. And in this, uh, Bishop leads a team of X-Men after a group of other mutants have attacked a New England town. And it's up to the heroes from Krakoa to come and kind of save things, but also to kind of show, hey, we're not all bad. That isn't all of us. But that it's a part of Fall of X. I think whatever this mutant attack is, is going to be pretty devastating if it leads to you know, a pretty big uh, uprising against the mutants. So didn't want you to miss this, especially if you're planning on reading the Fall of X storyline, as this is a before the fall tie-in issue. Uh, This is our A cover. We have our Wernick Stormbreakers variant, which is very cool. And we have a Vega variant as well. All right, so role-playing and comic fans, there's a new Pathfinder series that's starting called Wake the Dead. So, you know, we research all these books. We read about them. We read the solicitations. I don't feel like I need to really tell you any more than it's Pathfinder. It's set in that world. It's set in that system, and it's got undead. But what I will challenge you is read the solicitation yourself. I mean, this is like paragraphs and paragraphs. It's one of the longest solicitations I've seen in a long time. But what's funny is it's unedited and you can tell because there are notes in it. There's at least one note that kind of says they're going to change the solicitation. (laughs) And after that, I'm afraid he's revealing things in the story. I don't want to say. Yeah. Cause what it, what it said, it said, this will be tweaked when I get info from Paizo. And of course, Paizo is the company that owns Pathfinder. Yeah. Well, it never got tweaked. And that (laughs) line is there. And I think everything after was supposed to be, tell me what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not. Anyway, just funny little story about it. Spoiler alert if you go in there and read. Yeah, there you go. So here is the main cover, and then here is the variant cover to the new Pathfinder Wake the Dead series. Okay, a new one is Pink Elephant, number one of three. So all I have to tell you is this is from uh, E&E, Pliskin, and Benson Chin, the team that brought you Heavy Metal Drummer. Hmm. So you are automatically kind of know, and you can see this is a little bit squatter of an issue. I'm guessing it's going to be the same size as Heavy Metal Drummer. Okay. Uh, that was it was almost like ash can size. It was a little bit shorter, but this is their take on an '80s slasher where a group of teens on a road trip uh, run into or start being hunted by a giant killer with an elephant head. Uh, now is this? real or is it a little trippy from maybe some stuff they take along the trip you'll have to read and find out but i know there were some big fans of heavy metal drummer and you'll want to jump onto this this art it reminds me of uh cuphead on acid <laughs> yep that's pretty accurate so that was our a cover and then we also have the chin variant all right so here is our nut her next segment 
cool covers and other comics. This is going to be where we go over variants that we think are noteworthy this week and issue number twos and threes, a comic series that just began that maybe you want a reminder that you might want to sign up for the ongoing series. Starting with Fantastic Four number eight. This is the George Perez variant. This issue is going to have, uh, it's going to be a two part storyline or two issue storyline. I'm sorry. Starting with eight and ending with nine where uh, something abnormal happens outside the Fantastic Four farmhouse. That's what the solicitation mm. says. It's like, I assume something abnormal would happen. This is a Fantastic Four. It would be weirder to say everything's just just normal. I think. Yeah. Yep. So it might have, uh, was it Impossible Man? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I Probably. Here is the Publish wraparound variant. Yeah, I love these. Just have fun so picking here, it apart. Here's the front. Here's the back. <laughs> something to do if you have a very long uh, doctor's appointment sitting in the waiting room or something. And here is the Romero variant. This is really nice. Issue. I like that kind of hot pink background. Okay, next up is Spider-Man number nine. And my main notes for this is hopefully everyone has caught on at this point after issue number seven and then number eight. They're all selling out. You've got Spider-Boy appearing in it. You know, I think this is only going to continue with Spider-Boy appearing here and there in it. But also, uh, I really like this story arc they've started. Uh, it feels very classic Spider-Man, especially with this last one. Uh, Spider-Man tried to enhance his spider sense. And he might have done it too much where he can't turn it off and it's kind of a cacophony of noise. Uh, and what does that have to do with Electro? You're going to have to find out. But this is our A cover, of course, by Mark Bagley. And then we have the uh, Andres Violet variant. Here's the main cover to Groot issue number two. So in this issue, it's going to explore who destroyed Groot's homeworld and also, who is this character named Yandar? And yes, it's uh, some sort of ancestor of Yandu. Interesting. Yep. So uh, so this is the main cover. Here is the Kokolo Stormbreakers variant. And then we have a Suza variant as well. Next up, we have Star Wars number 35. Now, the last issue sold out. And it's not on this week but they are doing a second printing of that issue. It uh, featured uh, a couple of first appearances, including Dr. Kuwata. And this is going to be, I think, more of his... If that was a cameo, this is going to be more of his first appearance. But uh, in this, Luke is trying to build his new lightsaber. And uh, he's going to need the help of this Dr. Kuwata, who is a kyber crystal expert. Um, but it says, you know, there's going to be a cost to that. He's not doing it for free, what is Luke going to have to sacrifice to build his new lightsaber? And it does tease that another Jedi will step in to, to help somehow. And around this time, there's not a whole lot of Jedi, so I'm interested to see who that is. I yeah. don't know if it's Yoda, but he is on the cover. Also, just a super cool cover. I, I kind of like this take on Luke, very comic booky. If it's Yoda, they should have to describe him as Jedi Master. That's very true. Give him the respect. Uh, this is also a very key. This is the Jimenez Star Wars Pride variant, but this is the first uh, appearance and cover appearance of Cinta and Vel from Andor. So, you know, there's a few of these that they do first appearances from shows or movies that haven't got adaptations, all of that. So this is a, kind of a first appearance. There is also, of course, the John Tyler Christopher action figure variant with Boss Nass. And we have the Lucasfilm 40th anniversary cover. Also, we have Star Wars Yoda number eight. This is great. I, I love the last issue. Uh, in this one, Yoda and Anakin are teaming up to attempt to take down the facility that is creating a new mega droid. But I think an interesting part of this is they do note this overlaps with Star Wars Revelations, the issue that came out, you know, that was kind of their... Uh, their Marvel Point One issue, but for mm. Star Wars, this is going to tie into that. So I don't, we didn't really know that Yoda was going to be tying in with that, but I'm very interested to see what part of that is in this. Uh, this is our A cover. Then we have our uh, Javier Garan uh, Pride variant. And then this is big. This is the Okazaki variant. 
uh, the last Okazaki variant was went for a lot because it was a a uh, incentive cover. Yep. But this one is open, open order, order, so That's definitely great. grab this while you can. Yeah, because, everyone can pre order it and just yep. pay cover price and be happy. This is not going to last on the shelves. All right, so this is the Davia variant for Invincible Iron Man number seven. In this, Tony Stark has decided to raise his spirits by building a new Iron Man suit. And it says that its first objective will be to infiltrate and destroy Stark Industries. So Very cool. I mean, he can build a suit in his sleep now. Like, yeah. He's done it so many times. He can have a suit, build him a suit. That's building him another suit. All right. And here is your Derek Chu variant with Ironheart on it. And lastly, here is the Layton connecting variant as he continues to do all the different Iron Man suits. And this one looks like maybe this is the one he's building. Building or it's putting it on him or something yeah. like that. And very much connected with Iron Man is X-Men number 23. So uh, the company, the person that owns Stark Industries now is actually using that tech to create new Sentinels to hunt the X-Men. Um, and in this, it sounds like uh, the X-Men are trying to stop it. And we also see on the other side that Tony Stark is trying to stop this from happening. So those two are kind of connected. We also have the Pride variant. This is by Wernick, Lucas Wernick. And this is really cool. This is the Mark Brooks Corner Box variant. Mm. Love this one, that classic team, giant size team. Here is the Mana variant, the Venom number 20. So what's cool in this issue is Eddie Brock is coming back to the world of the living. He has been away for this entire series, uh, you know, so he's coming back this issue. And again, this is the Marion, the mana variant for that issue. Also, World Tree, uh, issue one, very big seller, very hot book. Uh, issue number two is coming out. They don't need to reveal much in the solicitations or anywhere online because they know, you know, this is a mystery and they've got you on the hook. Uh, I can't wait to read this one. I love the first one, but we're going to learn a little bit more about the characters in World Tree in this issue. This is our A cover. I see the license plate says fear. Yep. And that's that's that character. She's on the next cover. This is the Danny variant with fear on there and you're starting to get some weird ideas like maybe she's from the undernet hmm. you know maybe she's part of it also wanted to show you that number one is going to a second print so if you missed out or you're you're guessing this is going to be a hot book you want to get all the covers you don't want to miss the second printing this should be second second print because you know the, when oh, they first true. released it they had the ones that were messed up and then they yeah, did the yeah. recall so all right, so this is our main David Nakayama cover to Gargoyles issue number six. And in this issue, Brooklyn is feeling the strain of leadership in the absence of Goliath. So again, this is the main cover. Here is the Perio variant. This one's incredible. Like seeing, you know, them in their stone form and everything. It's very cool. All right, and now it is time for the uh, last part of our show. It is other printings and graphic novels. Starting with Star Wars Darth Vader Black, White, and Red. This was a big hit, sold out very fast, and I love they used, this is an interior page from Peach Momoko's issue, uh, her story in there, but it's wild, fantastic. Wild art on that story. Wild, really like crazy, it. very much Peach Momoko, like her style, everything. Vader with that skull face. And I love that they picked this one to be the cover. So I think this is going to be a big one. People who even got the... The regular number one will want to get this one. There's also, uh, this is Star Wars High Republic Omnibus for Phase 1. So this collects, it's $100, it collects issue 1 through 15 of High Republic, Eye of the Storm 1 and 2, and Trail of Shadows 1 through 5. So if you want to read all the High Republic Phase 1 from Marvel in one place, this is how you do it. This is our uh, main cover for that. And there's also a Phil Noto variant cover for that okay for $24.99 dc is releasing punchline the gotham game in hardcover format so this is going to be all six issues of that series where got where punchline has gotten out of jail she's back on the streets of gotham 
and she kind of builds her new gang out of the Royal Flush mm -hmm. gang. So for $24.99, you, you can get that entire miniseries. Next up is Swamp Thing Green Hell. This was the Black Label book by Jeff Lemire and Doug Monkey. Uh, I think this is great because there was a huge yeah. gap between issues, so much so they had to re-release number one to kind of like make sure everyone was caught up with it. Uh, this is collecting issues one through three um, for $29.99. I know there's a lot of people, too, who uh, were waiting for it all to be collected to read it. Here's your chance. Um, from what I've read of it, I haven't finished it. But it is fantastic, and I can't wait to get this one. And the last book we're going over is Blue Book by James Tynion and Michael Oming is being released in its trade paperback volume one. It's going to be twenty four ninety nine. It's going to tell a real story, or you know, yeah. it's a real accounts, real accounts, yeah, of UFO abduction. Plus, they always have a B story, which is just some weird or historical or urban legend yeah. stuff. So uh, this is going to be the first five issues of it collected. I think it's 136 pages for $24.99. All right, that is our show for this week. So thanks for watching Comics from the Future. And don't forget, you can go to our website at infinityflux.net where you can sign up for any of these series. In fact, you can also just sign up to get whatever particular covers you want. And any pre-orders that you make, you get 10% off and we really appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who has ordered through our site yes. so far. We really appreciate it. Doing the show, we did it for years, just a labor of love. Uh, and now it's nice that we can kind of expand our store yeah. through it a little bit as well. So again, thank you very much. And we'll see you next time.